Once again, good morning or good afternoon, distinguished guests and colleagues. It's my pleasure to welcome you to this important Spark Learning event on disability inclusion in rural transformation. My name is Seraphine Awa. I am the West and Central Africa Coordinator for Procaso. And I will moderate the today's learning event. In the next 80 minutes, we'll be exploring insight and progress on inclusion across Mozambique, Malawi, Burkina Faso, and India. We'll also hear from frontline practitioners through interactive panel discussions and reflection by EFAT country offices. Our goal is to catalyze learning and reaffirm our sharing commitment to rural transformation where no one is left behind. Now to kick off, we will have opening remarks from EFAT and Spark leadership. My pleasure is to welcome Mrs. Ndaya Belchika, the lead technical specialist, gender, targeting, and social inclusion at EFAT. So we are thrilled you could join us today. To kick off, could you please, Mrs. Ndaya, provide us some opening remarks about EFAT works and priorities on the aspect that bring us together today. Over to yes. You. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can you hear me okay? Okay. Excellent. Excellent. So thank you so much for this introduction. So my name is Ndaya Belchika, and I am the lead technical specialist on gender, social inclusion, and targeting. So because we are inclusive, I will just describe myself very briefly. You know, I like to believe that I'm young and beautiful, which I am, but let me first very <laughs> say that I am a black woman. Uh, I'm wearing braids uh, that are two colors. I should wear glasses, but I don't uh, because I don't want to show people that I have don't, I don't have a good sight. And I'm wearing a green shirt, uh, a green t-shirt, a sweatshirt. There we go. Um, so this is for everyone to have an idea of what I look like. So I'm very honored to stand before you today um, at the beginning of our Spark Disability Inclusion event. As we gather here, um, I would like us to remember that IFA, the International Fund for Agricultural Development, has a strong commitment to fostering sustainable rural transformation. And at the same time, EFAD also take immense pride in the work and the promotion of disability inclusion in our projects. Over the course of this event, we will dwell, delve into the critical aspects of disability inclusion, especially as it pertains to agriculture and rural development. Each segment of our agenda has been thoughtfully designed to foster a better understanding, collaboration, as well as actionable insights. In collaboration with Light of the World, for the world, the International Labor Organization and Procasur, we present to you the SPARK program, which aims to impact the lives of at least 7,000 persons with disability in four countries, more specifically in Burkina Faso, India, Mozambique, and Malawi. As we all know, agriculture is the backbone of many economies, in particular in developing nations. It is a sector that holds many promises, has a great potential for growth, innovation, and sustainability. However, for agriculture to truly strive, it must be inclusive. Disability inclusion in agriculture is not just a moral imperative, 
but is also an economic one. By ensuring that persons with disability have equal access to resources, training, and opportunity, we are not only upholding their rights, but we are also unlocking a deep reservoir of untapped potential. A diverse workforce, which includes persons with disabilities, brings a variety of perspectives and problem-solving approaches. This diversity can lead to innovative solutions that might not be immediately apparent in a more homogeneous group. For instance, adaptive technology designed for persons with disabilities can often lead to more efficient agricultural practices that benefit everyone, in particular women and young professionals in the rural areas. Furthermore, by including persons with disability, we are essentially, by excluding persons with disabilities, we are essentially sidelining a significant portion of the potential workforce. Their active participation can boost productivity, fill a gap, and contribute to the overall economic output of the agricultural sector. In rural communities where resources can sometimes be scarce, everyone's contribution is vital. Persons with disability, when given the right tools and opportunities can play pivotal roles in their communities. They can be involved in various agricultural processes from planting to harvesting to value addition and selling their produce. Their economic empowerment can lead to a ripple effect benefiting their family and always the broader community. We want today's event to be truly interactive. So throughout the event, I encourage every one of you to actively participate it, as our moderator has mentioned, to ask questions, share experiences, and most importantly, to also actively listen. Listen to the stories, the challenges, as well as the triumphs of the participants. For it is through understanding and collaboration that we can truly make a difference. So on behalf of IFAD, I extend my gratitude to all the organizers, participants, and our esteemed partners so that we note your presence and your contributions, which are invaluable. Together, let's make this event a milestone in our journey towards a more inclusive and equitable world. Thank you, and let's embark on this enlightening journey together. Thank you. Thank you very much for those insightful comments, Mrs. Ndaya. It's clear that IFAD is making great strides towards sustainable and inclusive rural transformation. And also, when you were, you were uh, presenting or describing yourself, it, I feel like, I felt like you were describing me, <laughs> except that I am wearing a blue jacket. Thank you once more. So now I would like to turn to Mr. Ambrose Marangina from Light for the World International. He is the thematic director for disability inclusion. So Ambrose, could you give us a glimpse into the SPAC Global Initiative, I'm sure our audience will benefit greatly hearing from your perspective on this important effort. Over to you, Ambrose. Thank you, moderator. And thank you, Madam Daya, for making a nice presentation. You have made my work very easy and simpler. Uh, first, I want to inform you that I'm Ambrose Murangra. I work with Life for the World as a thematic director for disability inclusion. And I just want to add on what Madam Mundaya has said. Just to build on the pace on what you have said. Oh. 
Globally, 15% of the population are persons with disabilities. So that means each community, we have to consider there's a percentage of 3% to be persons with disabilities. And we believe disability is a result of impairment and barriers in society. But the challenge we have, how are we as development partners doing to remove those barriers? To ensure that different impairments are able to participate fully at the same time meaningfully in all the processes. But also very important for us to appreciate diversity, diversity or different impairments. Because we have different impairments and also have specific unique needs. And very important that SPAC programs has helped us to unveil so many things on our journey. As Madame Ndai made a summary about, about what SPAC is, once again, I want uh, just to, re to re enforce what you have talked about. is about giving the right tools and resources to ensure that people with disabilities are fully included in the community. Very key point. This is what the Spark program is doing. Next slide. Uh, probably the person in charge of slides, you can speed up. The overall program objective is that persons with disabilities, particularly women and youth with disabilities, become active participants in and benefit from the rural development projects tailored to fit the specific profiles and their disability priority needs, constraints, and opportunities. So to achieve now, to achieve that objective, we have different approaches we are using. And these approaches, next slide, first, of the approach we are using under SPAC. Because the question is how to spark disability inclusion in rural transformation. That's a big question. Many development partners, they, they always ask how can this be done? And many approaches have been used under SPAC, using different innovative approaches. And I can single out three approaches, one of which is putting persons with disabilities in the lead, where we mobilize young persons with disabilities who will live with the experience to become disability inclusion facilitators. Because to show that they are able to work and in the due course, they are able to show ability in action, they can use their lived experience to create change they want to see happen. And also, they can do their self advocacy. So, for 82 younger persons with disabilities have been trained as disability inclusion facilitators across the countries where SPAC is being implemented. And of course, I have, around SPAC, one mentors have been trained to support in this program. So you may wonder what do the DIF or disability inclusion facilitators do? What is their role? They facilitate the process of change by conducting training, like conducting disability awareness training, doing disability crossing programming, and also providing coaching to different uh, staff, different organizations to ensure that they become inclusive in those processes. 
because it's, disability inclusion is a journey and there's so many things to learn as people do disability inclusion. And through the disability inclusion facilitator, over 518 staff had been trained. And through this training, you know, after the training, they always come up with some actions. Out of the training, the stakeholders, the partners, we came up with the 12 disability inclusion action plans. This, these action plans can help this organization on how on what they can do to be disability inclusive. And hence, there's a lot of training and coaching the partners because many times the partners always get stuck. They don't know how to do disability inclusion. So the disability inclusion first to play a key role in supporting the partners. The second is the innovation approach. The innovation labs and even agri labs. This is related to human centered design, where we engage with different partners. We look at the key stakeholders to come up with these solutions to ensure that personal disabilities are included. So they always own this process. And it becomes very easy to really encounter all sorts of the challenges because they could also look at which kind of uh, devices they may need to participate fully in like program like agriculture. And with Innovation Lab, there have been some co-creation spaces where I can be ruled out uh, like in Burkina Faso, Malawi, Mozambique, and through the Social Innovation Lab, we establish disability inclusion value chain uh, analysis tool. And also there have been a lot of games The third innovation approach also have a help desk. This can even help even in other countries, not necessarily under SPAC, not, not under SPAC also, to have learnings about the importance and they can also be using these services. The help desk can help us a lot of resources to support uh, the, them in their journey. At the end of it all, SPAC is creating an enabling environment for the social and economic inclusion of persons with disabilities. And through that, we've been able to work with organizations with of personal disabilities as alliances. Uh, because you'll be able to hear with our colleagues from different countries sharing on how SPAC and OPD have been involved. And also policy engagement. And through the engaging with the partners, they can be able to identify the gaps, which can also come as an advocacy point. But also awareness raising to change those mentalities. Learning and route. so far, four learning groups had been implemented, yeah. which helped to create awareness and building partnership, significantly increased access to relevant information, knowledge to different countries. So at the end of it all, Thank you, we have learned disability inclusion is more about mindset change and system change. So as we talk about disability inclusion, very important to look at how to change the mindset and at the same time changing the systems. So those are two takeaway we have learned so far. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ambrose. Um, thank you for that wonderful introduction on our home, Spark. So now um, we have reached the part of our learning event I am most excited about. So this is the Spark Innovation Spotlight. And over the next hour, we will be highlighting some of the standout achievements and innovation coming out from our Spark countries. 
So to liven things up, we are going to have each country interview and spotlight another in a fun back forth format. It is chance for all of us to learn about the amazing work happening in the different part of the world. So this is how it will flow. India will kick things off interviewing Malawi, then Malawi will spotlight Mozambique, Mozambique will highlight innovations in Burkina Faso, and finally, Burkina Faso will circle back to India. I have no doubt we are going to hear about some truly inspiring innovations. To the peer-to-peer -peer format gives us a unique window into what's working across the regions and cultures. So without further ado, let's hand it over to India to get the ball rolling. I will call India Rashna, please over to you for the first interview. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Seraphine. Um, hello and welcome to Malawi panel, where we will learn about the disability inclusion facilitators model in Malawi and how it is promoting inclusive rural development and empowering persons with disabilities. I'm Rachna Singh, the Disability Inclusion Advisor for SPARC in India, and I'm also the host for this panel. I'm honored to introduce you to our four speakers who are experts and practitioners on the DIFF model in Malawi. Joining us today is Willard Mobawa, the Disability Affairs Officer from the Department of Disability. Next, we have Chimwamwa Baluwa, the Assistant Rehabilitation Officer from Malawi Council for the Handicapped, who also serves as a DIFF mentor for Theola District. Also with us is Simon Munde, the Acting Executive Director of the Federation of Disability Organization in Malawi, known as FEDOMA. And the last but not least, we have Ikari, the Gender and Social Inclusion Officer from the TRAIL IFAD funded program. Please join me in welcoming them and getting ready for a fascinating and informative discussion. Let's begin. Uh, welcome to the conversation. Willards, ask the question to our dear Chimwamwa. Uh, so uh, now coming to dear Chimwamwa, as a rehabilitation officer and disability inclusion facilitator and also mentor for the DIPS, how beneficial has the mentoring structure mentioned uh, is, collab is fostering collaboration with IFAD supported project? If you can speak, that would be really helpful. Chimwama, over to you. Okay, hi. I don't know if you can hear me. I was having difficulties with the, the voice. We can hear can you. you hear me? We can you can hear me. Aha, yeah. uh -huh. okay, fine. All right, so in terms of uh, the mentoring structure, how beneficial it has been in, in terms of collaborating with the INFAD programs. Mm, the structure has been so very much beneficial because firstly, we as mentors, we have the physical presence in the district. And so, so I'm say, what I'm trying to say is that we, are, we form part and parcel of the government structures at the each, each and every district. So we are members of the INFAD program structures. Mm, for example, I will talk of trade. So trade has its own district planning implementation team at the district level in which we are part and parcel of that team. And also, I can also talk of farms. Eh? I am a member of farms eh, district implementation team. So just because we are members of that team, it gives us an ample chance for us to uh, talk of issues of disability in their programs. Uh, and also another thing, we are politically active in the district. Uh, what I'm trying to say is they cannot do anything without informing us as mentors. Uh, DIFs cannot work on their own without 
us as mentors. So just because we are very much visible at the district level, it becomes very, very easy for the project coordinators for farms and even trade to connect with us, as well as us connecting with the, uh, the DIFs at different, uh, in their different working areas. So the structure has indeed become very much beneficial in, in our respective areas, just because we are part and parcel of the system at the at the at the government at the government level. Uh, if my if there might be any any questions or any additions, I think I can because I've got so many examples that we can give. So I, I don't know about the time. I don't know how many minutes I've been given because I've got a whole lot of things to say. I don't know how many minutes I've been given there. How many minutes do I have? Much. Thank you very okay. much for those wonderful insights. Please share right. in just one minute about okay, the persisting fine. challenges of the model at large. Okay, the challenges. Yeah. We have we have only one challenge. We don't have many challenges. We have one in which the challenge is in terms of we have financial challenges. Uh, for us as mentors to be able to reach to the DIFs because we might have... Uh, some other activities that we might need them to do for us in terms of spark. So for us to reach the DIFs, most of the times it's become difficult because we talk of airtime, we talk of even transport to get to where the DIFs are. It becomes a challenge. So that's the only challenge that we have at the moment, a financial challenge. But when it, when it comes to the whole DIF model, we don't have any challenges in that. We are not meeting any difficulties in terms of uh, the DIF model. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, coming to Simon. Simon, you are managing a very important federation of disability organization in Malawi. Since the beginning of the SPARC, you have been, uh, there. Ha what has been the contribution of the DIFs to your advocacy efforts? If you can just highlight those, that would be really helpful. Thank you. Good morning. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you can hear me. I hope you can hear me. Yes, yes, we can, Simon. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Uh, as Federation of Disability Organizations in Malawi, one of our key mandates is the issue of building capacity of our affiliate organizations and as well as making sure that uh, organizations of persons with disabilities are having a voice. And uh, one of the major challenges that we've been experiencing over the years is capacity of organizations of persons with disabilities at the national level, district, as well as community level. And these kind of challenges are even more serious at uh, district and community level, where we have uh, district disability forum, as well as the area disability forum. But the coming in of the uh, disability inclusion facilitators has helped us quite a lot. Uh, more especially in the four targeted districts of Cholo, Kasungu, Nkarabe, and Chitipa, uh, because uh, they were trained. Uh, they had uh, 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 a two-week training on disability inclusion. And uh, just the idea of capacitating these young people in the area of disability inclusion Give, uh, gives us a future in terms of advocating for disability inclusion, because these are young people that will be there for quite some time. At the same time, they've also been playing an important role to uh, contribute, uh, becoming technical experts to our structures like the District Disability Forum and the Area Disability Forum, so that they can properly interface with uh, authorities like a district council level, at uh, area development committee level. So that has been quite a helpful kind of a thing because these are people that have been capacitated uh, enough. And at the same time, we are also talking of our advocacy role, more especially in adv advancing uh, disability policy and legislation that is uh, uh, taking into consideration the UNCRPD, and uh, because they've been trained, uh, they've also been working with people with disabilities on the rural communities, 
Uh, most of the issues that face persons with disabilities at the grassroots level have been brought forth into our advocacy work uh, so that we advocate from an informed perspective. Just this year, we've made some mission to the UN Committee on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, uh, UN Committee on, on CEDAW, and um, uh, some of the DIFs uh, have been deliberately uh, contacted or concerted to contribute to these kind of reports. That's very interesting, Simon. Thank you. Thank you very much for so those that. Uh, the so now I thank will. You. Yeah, thank you. So our last question goes to Ikari. Ikari, you are Gender and Social Inclusion Officer of the Trade Program, which is funded by IFAD and supported and supports rural development in Malawi. You have been working closely with the DIFs and the mentoring structure to promote disability inclusion in your program. Can you briefly talk, tell us uh, what are the main achievements that you have been, that you have seen so far and how do you think IFAD and other stakeholders can build on these achievements and enhance their disability inclusion efforts in rural livelihoods even more? Over to you, Ikari. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Reshna, uh, for that question. I'll, I'll, I'll be very brief. I will just uh, highlight a few uh, of our achievements that we have achieved so far. Uh, so for us, I think in terms of disability inclusion, we started at the beginning uh, when we were developing our targeting strategy. Uh, so we ensured that uh, we indicated a quota is there. So what we are trying to do is to ensure that 5% of our total beneficiaries are persons with disabilities. So currently, uh, we have managed uh, to ensure that at least 2.5% of our current uh, beneficiaries, uh, the ones that we are currently working with, are persons with disabilities. Again, uh, indeed, like you mentioned, that we have been working with the disability inclusion facilitators. So what we did as a program uh, is to engage disability inclusion facilitators uh, to conduct awareness sessions in the, uh, with the farmer groups that we work with. So... Um, they did the awareness sessions in 43 farmer-based organizations. Uh, and indeed, uh, we managed to select uh, 43 uh, disability inclusion focal point uh, be farmer-based organization. Additionally, we managed to uh, also uh, select uh, 36 uh, disability inclusion focal points, uh, which are government staff at extension planning area. So um, those are some of our achievements. And after those, uh, those sessions, those awareness sessions, I think we have managed to reach out to 130 uh, persons with disabilities, and of those, uh, about 61 have already joined the farmer-based organizations that we're working with. So um, additionally, I just wanted to mention uh, that indeed, uh, we did not target uh, the four districts which are being piloted by uh, SPAC only, but we did this intervention uh, in all the 11 districts that as a program uh, we are working with. So in terms of... Uh, what if another stakeholders indeed can do in terms of scaling up uh, uh, efforts to disability inclusion? I think uh, number one is to ensure adequate resource allocation uh, to disability inclusion efforts, uh, to training uh, of uh, more disability inclusion facilitators, because uh, right now as a country, I think we only have 20. And um, I mean, uh, we are working in so many areas with so many people. So if they could uh, provide more resources to ensure that uh, we train more disability inclusion facilitators who can also uh, be able to reach uh, more uh, uh, organizations and I mean, uh, farmer-based organizations and communities, I think we can make a headway in terms of uh, disability inclusion. Uh, thank you so much, Reshna. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, panelists, for those insightful discussions. Uh, over to you, Seraphine. Thank you. Thank you, Rashna. Um, I would like to add my voice to thank um, our guest from Malawi for that um, enlightening look at the committee's work being done there to anchor disability inclusion through the disability inclusion facilitators model. It's clear that they have made tremendous strides, though challenges remain, and they highlighted the main challenge that is the financial one. 
Now, uh, before hanging um, the microphone to Mozambique, I would like to remind you that the um, chat box is still open. If, if you have questions or comments, post, post them in the chat box. The panelists and our colleagues from the help desk are available to give you more answers to your concerns. So now I'm pleased that Mr. Vincent Tavala from ILO Malawi will be staying on stage to lead our next interview on Mozambique effort on disability inclusion in agriculture and livestock value chain. Over to you, Vincent. Thank you very much, Seraphine. Good afternoon, good morning, colleagues. I'm pleased to welcome you all to this important panel on this uh, discussion on disability inclusion efforts in the agriculture and livestock value chains in Mozambique. And my name is Vincent Kavala, working with the ILO in Malawi as a disability inclusion advisor for the SPAC program. Joining me today are two distinguished practitioners from Mozambique. Uh, we have Jose Machangwana, who is a disability inclusion advisor for SPAC. He has led efforts to build the capacity of local governments to provide services that are more inclusive of persons with disabilities. Secondly, joining me is Louisa Kalima, coordinator for, for the IFAD funded ProCover project in Mozambique. She's championing government efforts to include better and more persons with disabilities as users of the ProCover. Mr. Machangwana and Ms. Kalima offer invaluable experience and insights into disability inclusion in agriculture, as well as livestock value chains in Mozambique. I look forward to an informative dialogue and joining me to welcome our speakers this afternoon. Welcome, Jose. Uh, and as I said, thank you for joining us today. And we're very interested to hear about the progress that has been made in Mozambique in as far as the inclusion of persons with disabilities is concerned. Can you tell us about the interventions that you have done in Mozambique on agriculture and livestock value chains uh, in relation to disability inclusion? Uh, Monto, thank you very much. Uh, I don't know, can you hear me? Yes, you can hear you. Okay, thank you all uh, quickly. Uh, we have a few time to share our experience. Uh, first, we, we assume that this part is a specific project that was designed to support a fund project to include, uh, to become inclusive and to ensure that no one is left behind. Uh, we also look to Spark as a great opportunity uh, to, uh, for IFAD programs and other stakeholders to promote necessary and appropriate adaptation, modification, and adjustment in order to ensure that uh, people with ability enjoy and exercise under equal conditions, opportunities, with, and there are people without disabilities. So far, as I'm um, proving the level of technical and the inclusion advice, and inclusion and all, uh, so far uh, was improved the level of it. Technical uh, methodological knowledge on the bit inclusion, identification analysis, and remove the barriers that uh, uh, people with ability uh, to uh, in development project. Total number of technical phenomena are reached the right uh, um, so far. We have trained the 26 GIFs, which 
which handed also uh, 109 uh, students from our partners. We provided training also for senior manager for Prokhara, for Prodapi, uh, Basil Maputi, that is senior managers. Also, we provide, uh, uh, provide uh, train, train uh, for more staff as uh, umbrella OPDs. Also, we provide uh, uh, 13, um, training for 13 uh, technicians uh, related to uh, social issues. We provide also the uh, four um, training for say, senior manager for REF, that is uh, as a financial um, um, part of uh, um, effort. Also, we provided the, the, uh, the, tra the, the training for six mentors. Uh, we have conducted uh, several uh, activities to raise and raising related with the inclusion of disability in the communities. Thank you very much, Jose. Um, in the interest oh. of time, thank you very much for thank you. Thank you. sharing the positive progress that has been made in Mozambique. Especially, uh, I am singling out the issue of capacity development, which is very key in disability inclusion. Now, coming to, to Louisa. Uh, Louisa, are you there? Muito uh, obrigada. É um prazer estar aqui a partilhar a nossa experiência. Dizer que o programa Procava iniciou na nossa província e nós já sabíamos que é um programa de inclusão, mas sentíamos que alguma coisa nos faltava que era de como lidar com a pessoa com deficiência. Thank you very much, uh, Luisa. Uh, you are the coordinator of the Procava project, which is funded by IFAD, and it supports road development in Mozambique. And Procava has been working to ensure the inclusion of around 500 persons with disabilities in, in the different value chains uh, that are covered by the project, such as cassava, uh, cashew, and pottery. Can you tell us more about that? Uh, what were the main challenges that you faced and how did you overcome those challenges? Over to you, Louisa. Yeah, obrigada. Então, uh, na verdade, uh, são as cadeias de valor que o colega mencionou. No início, nós iniciamos a nossa atividade uh, sem algum conhecimento de como lidar com a pessoa com deficiência. Sabíamos que 50% dos nossos beneficiários têm que ser mulheres, 30% jovens, mas não tínhamos aqui uma clareza de quantas pessoas com deficiência nós devíamos incluir. E aí houve um treinamento que tivemos com, com a ajuda do programa SPARC, porque nós vemos a, a deficiência na perspectiva de caridade, mas com a parceria que tivemos com o programa SPARC, já começamos a ver a deficiência na perspectiva de direito. E, e daí começaram os treinamentos que tivemos, nós já começamos a remover várias barreiras. A primeira barreira até foi ao nível do, dos técnicos. Nós, como os implementadores do programa, começamos a saber como lidar com a pessoa com deficiência. E dali, juntamente com uh, o programa Sparking, nós elaboramos um plano para a inclusão da pessoa com deficiência nas cadeias de valor do programa. Então, foi onde tudo começou... Uh, o, o nosso trabalho, porque nós não trabalhávamos sozinhos, começamos a trabalhar uh, com os DIFs, uh, a um nível dos distritos, uh, o programa Procava está em seis distritos, e, e, e o programa uh, Sparking está em três, e começamos a trabalhar juntos, começamos a planificar juntos com os DIFs, com os serviços distritais das atividades econômicas, com os serviços de saúde, de saúde de mulher ação social. Aí, na imagem, retrata mais ou menos aquilo que foi o resultado deste trabalho de, de coordenado. Realizamos uma feira onde os nossos beneficiários, que são pessoas com deficiência, expuseram aquilo que são os seus trabalhos. E, e ali houve a participação do, do administrador do distrito, houve a participação dos líderes comunitários, porque eles já sabem que existe este movimento 
eh, ao nível do, dos distritos, que é para incluir as pessoas com deficiência. Então, o, o, qual é o papel, que, como é que nós trabalhamos com os DIPs? Nós trabalhamos uh, em todas as atividades que o extensionista está a fazer de assistência ao produtor, nós saímos com o DIF. O DIF tem um papel de sensibilizar os nossos beneficiários, como vem na imagem, tem mulheres, tem jovens, que nunca pensavam que uma pessoa com deficiência podia realizar alguma atividade. Então, o DIF aí entra para poder sensibilizar, fazer algumas palestras do que é deficiência, quais são as causas de deficiência, que deficiência não é um tabu. Uma pessoa com deficiência pode realizar alguma atividade de desenvolvimento. E lado a lado com os, com os DIFs, nós, nós começamos a aumentar as pessoas com deficiência. Nós começamos com 12 pessoas com deficiência, que eram os nossos pequenos agricultores de, de contato. Hoje, nós estamos com 475 pessoas com deficiência, sendo 60% são mulheres e 188 são, são homens. Mas foi graças a esse trabalho coordenado que temos tido com, com os DIFs. A nossa perspectiva, porque nós sabemos que é possível, sim, incluir várias pessoas, várias pessoas com deficiência nas cadeias de, de valor, é de, de forma permanente. Thank you very much, Luisa. We, we need to proceed with our chat. Uh, now, I want us to, to hear from you. How did you involve the disability inclusion facilitators to support the active participation of persons with disabilities in the activities of SPAC at district level? Uh, what are the main challenges or what are the many results of this hard work? And what are the challenges that were encountered and how did you overcome these challenges? And lastly, I also want to appreciate from you what is the added value of the DIFs to the Procover project? I hand it over to you. Bom, como eu dizia que os relatores são esses visíveis que graças o a rodas as trocas de experiências que nós tivemos uh, organizado pelo programa Sparking, eh, nós já temos algum conhecimento de como envolver as pessoas com deficiência nas cadeias de valor. E o fruto é o fruto é este. Hoje é o próprio CIDAI que está comprometido com a causa, é o próprio o próprio DIF que tem monitorado o trabalho que o programa Procava está a fazer e é o próprio beneficiário, beneficiário que já sente ele já, se sente, ele já se sente como agente da mudança. Então, estamos a ver agora muitos produtores a, a produzir uh, as hortícolas, a produzir os, os feijões e também um movimento ao nível do distrito, porque uh, a informação já está lá que a pessoa com deficiência ela pode desenvolver. Então, o, o, os nossos grandes desafios agora, como eu dizia, é de expansão para os outros distritos e o programa Sparking, Sparking vá a outros distritos onde onde não implementou. Então, este é o nosso grande desafio, mas pensamos que uh, esta campanha que vai iniciar, teremos outros números ainda maiores do que estes que nós já conseguimos. Thank you very much, Luisa. As a final question, would like also to hear from you. Uh, how do you think if and other key stakeholders can build on the gains that have been achieved so far in Mozambique? Did you get my question, Luisa? Uh, como coordinador ou como programa? As a program. With the engagement with the SPAC program, with the engagement with the Procava as a project coordinator, how do you think the gains that have been uh, gathered by the SPAC program could be strengthened? Bom, uh, eu penso que o, o que tem que prevalecer agora é continuar com os treinamentos uh, que o programa SPAC está a fazer, uh, a envolver cada vez mais o, os DIF, o, o DIF, o FAMOD no processo de planificação das atividades ao nível dos serviços das atividades econômicas e, 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 do, e do programa. 
Também uh, penso que é importante este suporte técnico que nós estamos a ter do programa Light for the World, porque capacitações são, são sempre importantes. Ainda muita gente precisa de saber como trabalhar com a pessoa de deficiência. Eles têm que tirar esta barreira. Então, se nós continuarmos a, a trocar experiências com as, outra, com, com, com as outras províncias, se nós continuarmos a trabalhar lado a lado com o DIF, eu penso que nós vamos ter resultados muito satisfatórios na área de inclusão. Já realizamos várias feiras. Este, esta imagem que nós reportamos ali é fruto de uma campanha onde mais de 100 pessoas com deficiência expuseram aquilo que são os seus produtos agrícolas e mostraram à sociedade de que nós somos capazes de expor o, 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 os produtos. Então, se nós trabalharmos de forma coordenada, planificarmos de forma conjunta e todos estarem comprometidos com a causa e nós mudarmos a nossa mentalidade, eu penso que nós vamos ter resultados encorajadores. E nós já estamos a ter e acreditamos que próxima campanha que já foi lançada aqui em Moçambique, os números, passemos desses números que nós já temos de, de 400 para mil ou, ou mais, é o nosso desejo. Thank you very much, Luisa, uh, and thank you very much, Mozambique, for sharing those learnings with us. At this point, I hand over to, to Seraphine to continue the program. Over to you, Seraphine. Thank you. Thank you, Vincent. Thank you very much. And thank you to our guests from Mozambique who continue to break new ground on disability inclusion in Mozambique. Um, so, um, I see that there are some good comments and questions that are going on in the Q&R box. Please don't hesitate to go there to have more insightful feedbacks on the work of SPARC on the ground. Now, let's head to West to spotlight Burkina Faso work. And uh, we call Jose back on the stage because he is the one who will lead the interview with our friends from Burkina Faso. And together, they will highlight Burkina Faso's work to promote inclusive agriculture through disability inclusion facilitators and the innovation called AgriLabs. Thank you, Jose, over to you. You are muted. Yes, th thank you. Thank you for um, here again. Um, okay. Um, hello, uh, welcome uh, to the final Burkina Faso. We will learn uh, how they are promoting inclusive agriculture through the work of the business system for and their experience with AgLab methodology. Uh, my name is Jose Mashangwana. I'm a disability inclusion advisor for SPAC in Mozambique. Uh, today, we will have a conversation with Bridget, a young disability inclusion facilitator who is working with a farmer with disability to promote their left foods and access it to, to market. We will also hear from Barre Sal Salman uh, to targeting the specialist of Fafa Katre program, who will uh, tell us how, how they're using the first photo approach to identify and support the most vulnerable household rural areas. And last uh, but not least, uh, we will talk uh, with uh, Mr. Sibalu, uh, an agricultural engineer that is Secretary General of uh, Southwest Regional Chamber of Agriculture, who will share with us insights on the role uh, on, in the role of other labs on forcing innovation and collaboration among the different actors and agricultural sector. Please um, join me and welcome our panelists to getting read uh, for engaging an informative discussion. Let's begin. Uh, Mr. Pare, thank you all for being us uh, with us today. We are very interested to hear about your work. 
in the project uh, support agriculture sector in the four region in southwest of Burkina Faso, North Africa Trail. Um, Africa Trail has been working uh, to support and the inclusion of persons with disabilities in the pro this project. Uh, so, can you tell us more about your strategy and how you implement it? How do you identify, mobilize, and involve persons with disability in, in different agricultural value chain? Please, over to you, Mr. Parry. Oui, merci à vous. Oui, merci à vous, Monsieur Zosé. Je ne sais pas si euh, on m'entend. Oui, okay. nous vous si écoutons. OK, au niveau du projet PAPFA 4R, c'est un projet qui se met en œuvre dans quatre régions du Burkina Faso, euh, la région du Sud-Ouest, la région des Hauts-Bassins, la région des Cascades et la région de la Boucle du Monde. Et pour le moment, euh, nous avons euh, essayé de mettre le projet SPARC en tant que projet pilote au niveau de la région du Sud-Ouest. Et ce que nous avons fait pour pouvoir euh, inclure les personnes handicapées au niveau du projet, c'est d'abord l'élaboration d'une stratégie de ciblage des bénéficiaires qui combine plusieurs types de ciblage, et, dont la première, le ciblage géographique, et spécifiquement par rapport aux personnes handicapées, c'est le ciblage direct qu'on a euh, souvent utilisé pour pouvoir accompagner la mise en œuvre du projet en incluant, bien sûr, les personnes handicapées. Après cette euh, stratégie qu'on a élaborée, nous avons aussi procédé à l'élaboration d'une grille et d'évaluation des demandes de, de promotion euh, euh, des personnes euh, pour euh, analyser un peu euh, les demandes que nous recevons. Et dans cette grille également, nous avons mis des mesures euh, incitatives et des et des, 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 des notes intelligentes, des, des grilles qui, qui, qui aillent dans la promotion de l'inclusion des personnes handicapées. Et à ce niveau également aussi, ça nous a permis de pouvoir privilégier, de faire une discrimination positive à l'attention des personnes handicapées pour qu'elles puissent participer aux activités de projet. Maintenant, avec l'avènement du projet Spark, ça nous a donné un tonus pour aller bien avant. Il s'agit euh, à ce niveau de la révision de ces différents outils avec euh, l'aide des de, de conseils en inclusion de l'ONG Life of the World qui met en œuvre le projet Spark au Burkina Faso. Et ça a constitué à relire ces différents outils et à les rendre encore plus inclusifs à, à personnes notamment handicapées. Après cela, euh, dans la mise en œuvre du projet, on a mis en place des organes de sélection qu'on appelle des comités régionaux de sélection, des comités pour, euh, provinciaux de sélection et des comités d'approbation des projets. Et donc, tout le public de ces comités, avec l'appui du projet SPARC, les a renforcés leur capacité pour qu'ils puissent être sensibles dans l'application aussi des outils qu'on met à leur disposition pour qu'on puisse avoir des résultats escomptés. Aussi, pour aller plus loin, avec le projet SPARC aussi, on a recruté au moins 15 facilitateurs en inclusion des personnes handicapées dans les chaînes de valeur. On l'a placé dans 15 communes de la région du Sud-Ouest qui, qui ont pour rôle de sensibiliser les personnes handicapées quant aux offres que le projet PAFA 4R les donne comme opportunité et les aider également aussi à, à s'organiser pour pouvoir participer à, aux différentes euh, offres de projets qu'on qu 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 lance. Et 
Aussi, l'appui du SPARC a, a été crucial aussi au niveau de l'équipe dans son ensemble. Le projet PAFA 4R, c'est dans quatre régions. Et pour pouvoir euh, mettre en œuvre ce projet dans les quatre régions, le projet s'est organisé, structuré et, et qui a des représentations dans chaque région et qui constitue un public assez large avec l'appui du. du, 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 du My second question is goes to British. British uh, my second question uh, goes to British. Brigitte, Brigitte. Are you um, a young, young girl? living with um, motor impairment, who is champion among the Zabitin Green Facilitator in Burkina Faso. So, so my first question is, what are the secret local support initiatives <laughs> undertaken <laughs> by the DG <laughs> of people in the trade for program? The second one, is how DGs are working to facilitate inclusion of persons with ability in existing agricultural cooperatives. Last one, and what the role of in organization with ability play in this process? Thank you. Over to you, Euh, Est-ce que la tradition peut suivre pour qu'on puisse comprendre ce que José nous a dit, demandé comme question? Monsieur Paré, allez sur le canal de traduction tout simplement. Vous sélectionnez. Euh, un... Oui, je suis, de, je suis déjà là-bas, sur le canal français. OK, on va travailler à ça. Merci. Bonjour à tous, je suis très contente d'être ici. Vous m'entendez? Bonjour, bonjour à tous. Bonjour, nous vous écoutons très bien. Allez -y. Merci. Je suis très contente d'être parmi vous aujourd'hui pour la rencontre en ligne. Euh, en ce qui concerne la première question, euh, les initiatives concrètes de soutien local entreprises par les facilitateurs d'inclusion pour la facilitation de la participation des personnes handicapées au PAFA 4 heures, on peut énumérer comme les activités de sensibilisation au niveau communautaire pour encourager les personnes handicapées à postuler aux appels à projets de PAFA 4 heures. En deuxième, on peut aussi en parler de l'identification des personnes handicapées travaillant dans les différents secteurs. Euh, comme deuxième question, euh, les facilitateurs travaillent à, pour l'inclusion des personnes handicapées dans les coopératives tout en se concentrant sur les coopératives existantes en collaboration avec les services techniques agricoles et en échange, des, en échange des réunions avec des membres de coopératives et les personnes handicapées afin de promouvoir l'inclusion des personnes handicapées dans les coopératives. Euh, concernant la question 3, le, le rôle des organisations des personnes handicapées Le, le rôle des organisations des personnes handicapées dans le processus, dans le processus d'intégration du handicap dans la scène de Valais, euh, on peut aussi en parler de euh, les organisations des personnes handicapées euh, mènent des activités dans les communautés pour, dans les communautés, toutes les compétences et connaissances du, et sur le handicap. Le processus du handicap, l'inclusion et les droits des personnes handicapées. 
et mène aussi des activités d'organisation des sessions de plaidoyer auprès des autorités administratives du PAFA 4 EC, des partenaires pour la participation des organisations de personnes handicapées au cadre et au cadre de consultation. Thank you, Brigitte, for sharing. Thank you, Brigitte, for sharing your experience. Uh, we are moved again to Mr. Paré. Mm -hmm. Mr. Paré, uh, I have a question for you. Uh, what is the challenge uh, facing personal disability in agriculture? What have you uh, experienced with the other lab in Burkina? What have been the results? The benefit from personal disability. So please share with us your challenge and how you overcome it. Please. Okay. Please. Trust you, Mr. Merci à vous, Zézé. Euh, dans la mise en œuvre du projet euh, Spark, un appui a été développé également aussi au profit des bénéficiaires. Euh, du PAFA 4R qui euh, sont des personnes handicapées. Et parmi ces ateliers qu'on a organisés, un certain nombre de défis euh, ont été relevés et qui concernent l'accessibilité aux parcelles euh, de production. C'est leur accès est limité aux terres sur lesquelles la production est basée et des difficultés également aussi de mobilité pour de nombreuses personnes handicapées. On note également aussi que le matériel de production est inadapté aux personnes handicapées où il y a une nécessité de les adapter. On note euh, un moyen, des moyens de transport en termes euh, d'intrants et d'équipements agricoles qui sont également aussi non adaptés à la situation des personnes handicapées, euh, couplé à cela le coût élevé des intrants de qualité que sont les semences les, euh, de, et euh, l'engrais notamment. On a aussi une adhésion des personnes handicapées au niveau de ces organisations-là qui constituent aussi euh, des défis qu'il convient de relever. Au niveau du de, de rôle euh, de, de, dans l'agriculture de ces personnes, on a identifié et renforcé les, produ les producteurs handicapés dans la zone ainsi que les sites de production. Il fallait qu'on arrive à, à, les, à, les, à renforcer leurs capacités. Aussi, il faut, faudrait également sensibiliser les, les communautés et la nécessité aussi d'inclure ces personnes handicapées dans les chaînes de valeur et encourager à rejoindre les organisations des producteurs qui sont déjà existantes pour qu'on puisse déjà renforcer leurs capacités. Il faut faciliter aussi l'information sur les opportunités existantes et faciliter la participation des personnes handicapées aux appels à projets que non seulement de PAFAL 4R lance, mais également aussi d'autres partenaires. En termes de résultats que nous avons eus et qui, avant, et qui concernent les personnes handicapées, c'est qu'on note une plus grande implication de ces personnes handicapées dans les chaînes de valeur agricole dans la région du, du Sud-Est, une plus grande ouverture aussi de ces organisations de coopératives aux personnes handicapées et il y a la création d'organisations aussi de personnes handicapées de façon spécifique euh, associée à cela, une meilleure compréhension des producteurs handicapés des défis et des possibilités d'adaptation qui sont possibles au niveau euh, de, du secteur agricole, notamment dans la région du Sud-Ouest. Thank you, Mr. Faré. Thank you, Mr. Faré. The time is running. Uh, so, uh, thank you for uh, again for sharing your work, uh, insight with us. So we are very impressed by progress uh, that Papa Patre program has made to promote inclusion of persons with ability in rural left goods in Burkina Faso. So as the last one question, um, we would like to ask you, Mr. Paré, how do you think IFAC and other key stakeholders can build on progress made so far? How can IFAD engage the the making inclusion efforts in the rural left road to further increase impact and stability. Please, over to you, Mr. Mare. Okay, merci bien, José, pour cette dernière question qui nous a adressée pour 
parlé euh, des questions de durabilité, de pérennité, des actions que nous devons faire pour euh, inclure davantage les personnes handicapées avec le soutien du FIDA au, au, au Burkina Faso. Donc, là, on note premièrement comme euh, premier défi, c'est surtout de prendre en compte les indicateurs spécifiques à l'inclusion des personnes handicapées dès le stade de formulation du projet. Quand on a un nouveau projet à formuler, il faudrait dès cette conception-là faire les balises de telle sorte que la personne handicapée puisse être euh, prise en compte dans l'écriture de, de, de ce projet-là. La deuxième grande observation qu'on peut faire, c'est de fournir des ressources spécifiques, c'est-à-dire allouer un budget spécifique qu'on peut appeler le budget d'inclusion, de telle sorte que les personnes handicapées puissent être soutenues parce qu'ils ont une certaine euh, dit, dotation qui n'est pas la même chose que la dotation initiale que des personnes normaux, je dis en parenthèse, normaux, des personnes qui ne sont pas handicapées. Donc, il faudrait relever leur potentiel avant de pouvoir bien les accompagner. Et en troisième position, telle que nous définissons aussi dans nos différentes stratégies de ciblage et d'inclusion, si on pourrait définir de façon claire, spécifique, un quota de bénéficiaires à chaque région ou à chaque localité pour dire que dans cette région, il faudrait un taux par exemple, de bénéficiaires pour le projet. Merci. Thank you, Mr. Paré, for sharing your experience. Uh, over to you, Seraphine. Thank you. Okay. Thank you um, to Joseph from Mozambique. Et merci beaucoup aussi à nos amis du Burkina Faso qui nous ont apporté euh, beaucoup d'éclaircissements sur le travail qui se passe au Burkina et qui est très précieux. So now we will go for our final country presentation and we will head to India. So I'm pleased that Anik Bambara from Life for the World Burkina Faso will stay on stage to lead the interview with our guest from India. Rashna and Anik, over to you. Thank you. Okay, Seraphine, thank you. Good afternoon. I'm pleased to welcome you to this important panel on the disability inclusion facilitators model in India and the steps is taking to empower women with disabilities through this approach. My name is Anik Bambara, disability inclusion facilitator for SPAC in Burkina Faso, and I will be mo moderating our discussion today. Joining me are two distinguished practitioners from India. Rashna Singh, Disability Inclusion Advisor for Spark in India. She has led the implementation of the Disability Inclusion Facilitator model, model in Masharatra. And Gori Dond, Program Manager for the Marvin Corporation. She has served as the state anchor for the model in Masharatra. Mrs. Singh and Mrs. Donde offer invaluable frontline knowledge of the disability inclusion facilitators models based on the direct work enable inclusion in India. I look forward to an informative dialogue on the step India is taking to empower women with disability through this approach. Let's welcome our speakers. We have much to learn from their experiences. Rash, no. You are disability inclusion advisor for the Navtesh Wini program in Mashrata in India. This program is funded by IFADS and supports women self-help groups to save money, lend money, and start their own businesses. Spark and Mavin are collaborating to make this program more inclusive and accessible for women with disabilities. Can you tell us what is disability inclusion facilitator model and how it's being received by the NAFTESH Winnie program? Thank you. Over to you, Rashna. Thank you. Thank you, Anik. 
let me tell you a little bit about India. India is a home to 26.8 million persons with disabilities, and they constitute 2.21% of the total population. And almost 70% of persons with disabilities live in rural areas. Let me begin with giving a brief overview of Navte Jusani. Uh, it is a program implemented by an independent corporation established under the Women and Child Development Department in Maharashtra. And Navte Jusani is implemented across all 36 districts of Maharashtra where 15 to 20 women from the marginalized communities in the village are organized to form a saving and lending groups called the self-help groups. There are more than 30,000 such groups which are spread across all 36 districts. And in Washington district where Spark project is implemented, we are working with around 1,200 self-help groups of women. These groups are spread over 11 community managed resource centers and we have selected 11 persons with disabilities from the villages in and around the CMRC area and trained them as, as disability inclusion facilitators. Out of the total 11 DIFs, eight are young women and three are young men with disabilities. They conduct awareness sessions in the community with the self-help group women, members, persons with the disabilities, their caregivers, and also with the general community. The DIFs directly identify women with disabilities and integrate them in the existing self-help groups, where these women access loans to start their own enterprise. Till September 2023, a loan of rupees 1.4 million, approximately 17,000 American dollars, has been disbursed to 30, 30, 33 women with disabilities and caregivers to start an enterprise. Women with disabilities and caregivers have started goat rearing, flower making machines, and have expanded their existing business of tailoring. And some have also taken loans to expand their farming. In addition to this, the DIFs have also been supporting the persons with disabilities to apply for the unique disability identity card, which is a mandatory requirement to access social protection schemes of the government. Till now, more than 500 persons with disabilities have applied for the UDID card since the time the DIFs uh, joined the program. And this is a very targeted interventions that they are taking place in the district. The district team then coordinates with the social welfare department and health department to expedite the issuing of the cards. Hearing and speech impaired and visually impaired children are also identified in the community and referred to the nearby schools for admission to ensure that they are not left behind. The attitudinal shift is visible from the time the selection process of DIFs happened when the MAVIM team was included in the selection process. The MAVIM staff witnessed more than 70 persons with disabilities who applied for 11 positions and each one of them was impressive during the interview. The zeal and enthusiasm of DIFs to work for improving the lives of persons with disabilities is unbeatable. These enthusiastic DIFs are mentored by the 11 community managed resource center managers who have also been trained in the mentorship support. So this is how the program is being implemented and actually it is integrated in all these steps of the MAVIM program, which is implemented in all 36 districts. Over to you, Anik. Okay, thank you so much, Rashna. So, Gori, you are the manager of the NAV Teja Win program in Mashrata in India. Follow up on our previous discussion about the NAV Tej Wini program with Rashna. Could you share the outcome and lessons learned from the disability inclusion facilitators models implementation? Additionally, how is the disability inclusion facilitator approach being integrated with other government offices and what successes have been achieved through this collaboration? Over to you, Gori. Thank you, Anik. Uh, thank you all. Thank you, Rachna, for starting discussion on behalf of India. So just to add a few points, which Rachna has already spoken. 
uh, we have this community managed resource center. Basically, it is a federation of self help group, and these institutions are the sustained institution. Their management cost is incurred by their own income. Just to add the points for the people who are not aware about the community managed resource center, and these centers are governed and managed by the women themselves. Uh, coming to the question which Anik has raised, in continuation to the Rachna's information which she has provided, the, the, the DIFS model which we are implementing here, so we call it as a disability inclusion facilitated model. Uh, the DIFS are persons with disability themselves selected from the villages of Washim district. Basically, Washim district is the aspirational district uh, wherein we have a low SDI. And also we found that the number of person with disability is more in this district. That's why we have selected district for the pilot. Uh, this uh, DIFs are from the community themselves and community members and other persons with disability focuses on the abilities of the uh, DIFs. When the DIFs go in the community, they say when she with an impairment can do it, even I can do. So there is a motivation which did spread over in the community when she's having interaction with the community persons in specification with the person with disability when she is visiting in the families. She has to become, has to become as a role model and she is being able to inspire the parents to send their children to the uh, blind school, also the girls with the locomotor uh, disability has explained about the scholarship and counsel for the higher studies. So a spot of their aspiration is getting raised now. Some light they're thinking, they're dreaming to go ahead. Women with disabilities have been identified and integrated in few of the self-help groups. And it is an empowering process for the women with the uh, disability. The DIFs have been able to establish linkages with the local village head and encouraging disbursement of 5% funds available for persons with disability. Their work with the different structures of Navatajitsuni program and in the community has helped in awareness raising among the community about various schemes of the government also. Our more focus is on convergence and spreading the awareness on the government scheme. Uh, DIFs have carved a niche for themselves and also coordinated with the social welfare department and have collaborated and supported with the social welfare department to organize the camps. We all know we, in, in, the, in the state of Maharashtra, we have social welfare department and all the schemes for government schemes for the person with, uh, person with disabilities are implemented through this department. So they have, they are Ori, organizing camps, yes. Thank you so yes. much. Yes, because of the time we need to, to go to the next question. Thank you. Just one point, yes. tell us one point. Our two, our two dips have received uh, $500 uh, to buy the uh, automatic uh, two-wheeler vehicle so that they can be mobile. So that is one of the tangible achievements I wanted to share. Thank you so much. Okay. Rashna, back yes. to you. Uh, you have also been exploring the intersectionality of climate vulnerability and its impact on women. with disability in Washim district. This is a very relevant topic for us also in Burkina Faso. Can you tell us more about your work in this area? How are you measuring this impact of the climate change on women with disability and their contribution to climate action? Over to you. Thank you, Anik, for this question. Very briefly, since we are running out of time, actually Washim district has been facing some extreme weather lately. It was dry and hot for a long time, and then suddenly it rained so much that it flooded. Uh, this affects people with disability and people without disabilities differently. We are doing a quick study to see how the climate changes makes life harder for women with disabilities. The DIFs will also be part of this study and will learn more about how climate change and disability are connected. 
The study will also look at the positive side and see how women with disabilities are actually helping to fight against the climate change. So this was in brief that we are looking at the study. Over to you, um, Anik. Thank you. Thank you for asking this question. Okay. Thank you, Gauri. And to finish, as the manager of Enough Tesh Money Program, you have a leading role in ensuring the program in impact and sustainability. How do you think IFAD and other key stakeholders can build on the achievement that have been made so far? How can IFAD enhance its disability inclusion efforts in rural livelihoods even more? Over to you, Gori. Yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, now, Mabim and Navatajiswini staff has invested time in raising awareness around disability inclusion and, <clears throat> and has brought the disability issue open in the community with the support of DIP. Community is open to listening and many have gained information and access services from the government offices. Issue of disability inclusion is now being recognized as an important issue for mainstreaming. One of the good thing is that has happened in convergence with the government offices, then uh, person with disability say that no one has engaged a specific person who reaches to them so DIF is the person who reaches to them and listens to them. So this is a very uh, effective model. Uh, it is the first time that we are talking about such kind of intervention. The project is also organizing youth with a disability so that this youth could be given some skill training and they can be mainstream so that they can become a, they can be entering the ecosystem of the enterprise development. Uh, we are advocating for the disability inclusion. So it will be good uh, if the project thinks of for investing in this uh, activity on a tangible way. That's what I would like to put it uh, in a way. If you are. And also there is a need to explore different kinds of interventions which can directly hit the issue of disability inclusion. Over to you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Gori and Rashna for, the, for sharing these experiences. Over to you, Serafin. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ani. Thank you um, to our guest from India. And uh, now, as we move to the last part of our event, I would like, before, before handing my microphone to um, Ambrose, I want to acknowledge the presence of Mr. Juan Carlos Mendoza, who um, is giving us honor to participate to this event. Thank you, sir, for being part of us. Uh, so thank you very much to all our guests for the four country. It was a rich discussion and a rich learning that we have from each of you. And in the chat, um, in the Q&R chat, you have more more, 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 more um, information that have been shared from the comment and also for the response of the question that were asked. So I will directly give uh, the floor to Ambrose for the last part of our event, which is the EFAT reflection. Thank you, Ambrose, over to you. Thanks so much, Seraphine, uh, for the good moderation. And also, it was good to hear good stories and interesting from different countries about the DIF work and how changes are happening on the issue of inclusion. Thanks, and we really, uh, thank for that. Because as we go, we should always have, as our practice, we always say take a poll. So this can take us back to different countries to hear from them, from what you have heard about the successful stories of the DIF and what is going on. Can we be able to hear from each commitment on the submit inclusion coming forward from now onwards, but bearing in mind that this program is almost ending next year. So commitment is very important to see how we can move on together. 
My first Richard. chance, I'm giving to Richard. Richard. Chakiza, the country program office of Ifad Malawi. Can you take the floor and share with us the commitments at country level? The mic is yours, please. Yes, I see Richard. Yes, I can see Richard. Please take the floor. Yes, uh, good afternoon, everyone. And thanks for different uh, presentations here today uh, under the SPAC initiatives. I bring you greetings from uh, country director Bernard and Ponyora from Ifad country Malawi. Uh, as, as, as already said, I'm Richard Jezika. And so uh, I have two assignments. I'm working on stake-up, but also looking after the mainstream themes of IFAD, which are four. We have climate and environment, we have gender and social inclusion, we have youth and we have nutrition. And so the issue of uh, SPAC uh, and interventions and initiatives becomes very important as it is part of the IFAD uh, 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 planning strategies in terms of integrating all, all these type of, uh, uh, in terms of integrating the issues of people living with disabilities in our projects. And so this forms a very important part of the meeting and uh, it's good to hear the different interventions that countries are, are presenting from ESA. Uh, I don't have many things to say uh, as, as, as I've seen that the, most of the things have been presented by uh, the people from our programs, especially trade that team. Uh, 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 that was making a presentation when, when we were doing the interviews. Uh, but a few things from my side, uh, which I'm going to bring to your attention. Um, under SPAC, uh, if a country office Malawi uh, is working with ILO, um, uh, which, is, which is working with the Minister of Gender, but at the same time, they are also working with the DOMA, uh, 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 where Simon is, uh, is, is, is the head, uh, head uh, uh, is the, uh, is the uh, programs manager. And so, basically, uh, ILO is working on capacity building and policy guidance. Uh, and so, in Malawi, uh, 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 we have four projects that the uh, SPAC is working on. Uh, we have uh, transforming agriculture through diversification and entrepreneurship trade, uh, where uh, 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 Jim Sole is coming from, Ekali, uh, the one who was part of the uh, 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 interviews. And also, we have uh, a Pride program for rural irrigation development which is basically looking into infrastructure development on, uh, on irrigation schemes. And of course, uh, the issue of agricultural commercialization uh, under trade. And then there's another program called FAMSI, uh, uh, Financial Access to Rural Markets and Smallholder Enterprises, uh, which is basically looking at uh, you know, improving the lives of uh, rural communities in terms of access to finance. Uh, people have given seed money uh, to do uh, different kinds of interventions in their, in their, in their, uh, in their families. You know, uh, give them seed money to you know help up, upscale uh, different interventions, which which includes climate smart uh, agricultural uh, interventions. And so, uh, 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 looking forward to that, uh, 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 Spark is working in four district councils. There is Chitipa in the north and Kata Bay. We have Tiolo in the southern region, and of course we have Kasungu in the central region. And so far. Uh, just to show IFAD's commitment, there are a number of things that are happening, which include uh, the issue of, uh, you know, uh, 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 making sure that the, there's, uh, there's what, they, what, what, is, what they're calling it, uh, 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 the Disability Inclusion Academy. And so under these programs, ILO has worked hard so far. I would like just to mention a few things that, uh, that are happening from there, but from the IFAD country office, uh, the commitment is that number one, as IFAD, as you know, IFAD has what is called the gender targeting strategy, which, which includes people with living with disabilities. What, that, what does that mean? It means every time where an IFAD project is being designed, the issue of uh, gender, the issue of disability becomes part of the target. And these things are deliberately you know, planned in the, in the project design just to show right. that. Uh, Yes, the, to show that uh, we are committed. And so in all these projects that I've mentioned, the three projects that IFAD is working on in Malawi, the four programs, yes. okay. all these things yes. were included. Are you able to hear me? Yes, I can hear you, but thank you. We are running out of time. Indeed, you have a lot to tell us, but uh, really this is really insightful. Thanks a lot, Richard, okay. for sharing. And uh, right. we can understand. Thank you. Right. Mm -hmm.
Yes, I've noted the key issues. May I invite now Jean Keitan Ranta, the country director for IFAD Mozambique, also share with us. Thank you, Ariel. I think what, the voice yes, is we have commitment. Yeah. How do we move? Yes, just quickly that um, uh, from Mozambique, that um, I, I feel personally that this uh, inclusion of persons with disabilities makes very much sense because IFAD is a people centric organization and uh, the work we have been doing with uh, Spark and in our case with the projects is so that the uh, inclusion of the persons with disabilities is not only right, but it's also possible. And, um, and in Mozambique, we are already mentioning this new, for us, it's a new target group. It's included in our country strategy. And also in our new designs, we are mentioning this uh, group without percentages, but it's mentioned as a group we want to achieve better. And what we still have to do is that we have to understand better we have to understand better the value chains and what are the opportunities. So I think that we have a huge work still to document. And I think that we can also benefit from other countries' opportunities that they have identified. We could also benefit from them in Mozambique. And when I say opportunities, also constraints. One of the things I particularly like this work of Spark in Mozambique is that uh, there are also there's a whole uh, range of work with the very practical improvements at communities like in improving the access and um, making it more like a, a friendly for persons with disabilities. And this is also something that we have to document and understand better because many times these uh, solutions that have been identified are not expensive. So we could do more of that. We have to do more knowledge products. I, I think that uh, the, related to these opportunities I was mentioning and also life-changing stories because I think that this awareness raising and sensitization is important and we have to do more. And I also think as an IFAD that we have to also probably consider when we are organizing venues, meetings, organizing logistics, we have to probably also be more sensitive ourselves that not everybody has the same opportunities and be more sensitive in our uh, operations. And just to give you finally one example that for example in UNCT, I'm part of the UNCT in, uh, in Mozambique and uh, Many, many people has, have started looking at IFAD as a champion in persons with disabilities. So we have to also respond to them and uh, include them and share our stories. I think many people are uh, uh, eager to work with us. And uh, yeah, so I think this is an excellent starting point. Thank you so much from Maputo. Thanks, thanks a lot, I wish you. Yeah, may I invite our next? Um, Trinayo, country director, if at Burkina Faso. Well, uh, so thank you so much, first of all, for this um, webinar. And uh, I would like to thank uh, the organizers. Um, I just wanted to say uh, that in as far as social inclusion as a theme, we take this seriously in the portfolio of Burkina Faso. We have recently finalized the design of a new program, and we have specifically targeted a number of persons with disabilities. And, uh, and so through that, uh, we, we will continue to systematically uh, target the persons with disabilities. We also have uh, a, a grant facility, uh, the Melinda gets we do have that facility already uh, that is working on gender transformative mechanisms. Uh, yeah, so with this uh, grant, we will not just uh, we will not just be looking at persons with disabilities, but specifically women and you and how they get to access, uh, you know, the various uh, materials for production. And then, of course, uh, wherever there are persons with disabilities in the targeted areas, we will work with them. Yeah, so the work on targeting persons with disabilities does not end, it continues. Thank you, and over. Thanks a lot, um, and for sharing those insights and perspectives from Burkina Faso. Now, next, may I invite Mera Mishira, Country Program Officer, India, also share with us 
Please, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Uh, and very quickly, uh, but just building on some of the points made in the past. Uh, first of all, uh, as we know, a lot of work is being done on disability inclusion now, uh, most of which is focused in urban areas. So the SPARC project has helped in bringing the attention and focus to rural areas. And this work in India, uh, being implemented together with Navti Gaswini, has opened the possibility of uh, working uh, with uh, rural women on disability inclusion. The model that is being tried in one district uh, of the project that is being financed by uh, Anita Glon, Navti Jaswini, has the potential to be replicated also in other districts. So this is one very good entry point. Uh, and we are hoping that uh, after the, you know, the completion of this project or while this project is still ongoing, we can already start working with the team of Marvin to see how this can be replicated in some of the other districts of, of uh, the Marvin uh, project area, the Nafti Jasani project area. The other wonderful aspect of uh, the Spark project in uh, India is that it is uh, being operated in partnership with the Women's Self-Help Group. Uh, the Women's Self-Help Group is a very core aspect of most of the programs of uh, being financed by IFAD in India, but also very large programs of the government themselves. I would urge ILO and uh, Fukasur and other partners to uh, document the lessons from and the, the process of disability inclusion that has happened in, uh, in uh, Maharashtra so that these can also be presented to the large government programs in India where a case can be made about its replication and scaling up in the larger programs of the government. And we will be happy to work with ILO and other partners to take it forward in discussion with the, with the government uh, overall, because there's a lot of scope for, for its scaling up. This aside, and as Anne also said, uh, because persons with disability is a key, key constituency for EFAT uh, projects across the world, also in India. Uh, so we will continue to take lessons from the SPARC project to other projects in India that are being designed or currently being implemented. Over. Thanks so much, Mera, here on what's happening in India, and of course, the plans ahead. Thanks. May I invite Yuan Carlos, the Director for Environment, Climate, and Social Inclusion Division. We are eagerly waiting to hear from you, please, Carlos. Hello, uh, this is Ndaya Belchika. I am speaking on behalf of Juan Carlos, uh, oops, Juan Carlos Mendoza Casadiegos, uh, the director of the Environment, Climate, Gender, and Social Inclusion Division. And fortunately, he was not able to remain because uh, we went a little bit above time. Uh, but then just as a little joke, um, I would describe him for you so you know what he looks like. So he's a white man, young and beautiful, wearing glasses, has a white shirt and a blue suits. So there we go for Juan Carlos. So very briefly, given that we are running out of time, I just want to thank everyone for this wonderful event. As we conclude this event, I am reminded of the profound journey we are embarked on to get uh, to do together. So, and I've learned so much that I am humbled uh, by what I see that I still have to learn, but also I have a deep sense of pride and gratitude as I reflect on our collective com commitment to promoting disability inclusion. We have seen from the examples of the four countries that have been showcased today that impairment in itself is a physical, mental, or sensory condition that can limit one person's movement, uh, sense of activities. However, 
It is the presence of external barriers uh, that actually trans transform that impairment into a disability. When individuals with impairment encounters environment that do not accommodate or are not inclusive, they are hindered from fully participating in societal activities. So it is important to remember that is not the impairment, but rather the barriers imposed by society in the environment that truly disable an environment and an, an individual. IFAD also recognizes that achieving disability inclusion is not just a goal, but a critical component in our pursuit of a more equitable world. As an institution, we have taken a step to develop its first corporate disability inclusion strategy for 2022 to 2027. This strategy is aligned with the United Nations Disability Inclusion Strategy and the Convention of the Right of Person with Disability. It has four broad areas, leadership, strategic planning and management, as well as inclusiveness, programming, and organizational culture. To achieve the implementation of this strategy, EFAT will adopt a twin track approach, which involves mainstreaming disability sensitive measures across all projects activities, while at the same time providing disability specific initiative to ensure the needs and constraints of persons with disabilities are identified, as well as supporting and participating in projects and that activities benefit them and that they are later on empowered. This project spark is just the start of this journey. I would like at the same time to note that this spark program has some specific target countries, but also have an help desk that we strongly invite and encourage countries interested in promoting disability inclusion to actually reach out to that help desk and ensure that they can learn from it to improve the disability inclusion. Reflecting on our discussion and shared insight, let us carry the lesson and inspiration from this event into our future endeavor. So to reinstate Ambrose's word, disability inclusion is indeed a journey. Let's continue our collective effort on promoting disability inclusion in agriculture, shaping a brighter, more equitable future for all. And with this, I thank you for all your active participation, insight, and commitment throughout this event. I look forward to our continued collaboration in the near future. Thank you very much. Back to you. Wow. Thanks, thanks a lot. Thanks, everybody. My panelists, and this with the commitment from IFAD countries. Now, let me take this opportunity to summarize out of what you have said. Of course, I've seen so many commitments, and of course, this can inform us as take home. One, we have agreed that we can make our programs disability inclusive. What does it mean? It's looking at how we can prioritize the program, especially those incoming programs, how inclusive are we ready? Also, how can we make those ongoing programs being disability inclusive? Secondly, we also have agreed disability inclusion or disability inclusion facilitator model works. So it's very important that we scale it up. Then in fact, we say we need to do a deliberate mobilization to ensure that persons with disabilities can participate. Number five, we need to make our country's strategies more disability inclusive. This can help to really get our overall goals. Number six, also we need to continue learning through sharing, I like it, the way we are doing right now. Number eight, continuing the removal of barriers that people with disabilities face in being included in our programs. Number nine, we need to continue documenting and sharing those best practices. Number 10, always continue raising awareness, training staff and partners. Number 11, Mozambique 
has promised to be our champion in disability inclusion. We will continue listening or hearing from you. SUPAC is looking at the rural area, which has created more opportunity to disability inclusion. Because many uh, for us, many activities have been looking in the urban area, but now look at the rural area is very important. 14, always continue to build partnership around disability inclusion. 15. 15th, we must make disability inclusion part of our organizational DNA. 16, mindful about the twin track approach. I thank you very much for all those commitments. And I'm very sure with the 15 commitments, we can tailor them to be able to support each country. At having a country level roadmap on how we can achieve those commitments of me. May I now push over the mic to Seraphine for your uh, final words. I thank you very much for your attention. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambrose. I think the final was, uh, was from you and from Daya. I would like just to say thank you uh, once more to the IFAT panel for informing us on their commitment to the mainstreaming of disability in Sparks country of implementation. So as you said it, we have come to the end of our meeting and we sincerely apologize for the extra minutes that we have taken and we thank you for staying until now. It is also an indicator of the interest that you have in this event. Thank you. We would like to say a big thank you to the panelists and especially to the audience for their active participation in the question and answer uh, chat box. It was very rich and dynamic interaction there. So please, if you didn't go there, please, before you look out, just go there and capture some extra information. So thank you very much. And uh, I think we have really come to the end of our event and see you next time. Yeah, we can we can applaud for all of the participants and all the guests, all the audience. Thank you very much. Thank you. And see you next time. Thank you. Thank you and bye-bye. Bye. Thank you, bye. Bye, interpreters. Bye-bye. Thank you to our interpreters. Thank you very much to all our interpreters, Spanish language, English, French, Portuguese. Merci beaucoup. Obrigado. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Ciao. Bye-bye. Thanks, Darcy. You've been a great moderator. Thank you.